Hello, welcome to scary sounding programming terms that aren't. So episode one today is going to be about lambdas. <clears throat> this is a series targeted for beginners. So maybe you've learned the basics of programming and out there in the programming world are all sorts of weird sounding terms. And some of them aren't actually that weird or that complicated. So we're just going to do uh, short videos short streams about some of those to kind of demystify them. So <clears throat> lambdas, you'll hear about this a lot. Sounds kind of uh, weird or scary, but you may actually have used them all the time without realizing it. Uh, and they're no big deal. So I've got a little example set up here where I'm, where I'm going to show what they are. So we have a class player. Player just contains a number of frags and a name. Very simple. <clears throat> and I've got a function here that will generate some random players. They're all going to be named John Doe, but they're all going to have different uh, randomized amounts of frags. So we're going to get back an array of these players. Now I'm doing this in C Sharp. This applies to any language that has lambdas, where it can even help you think about uh, how to deal with languages that don't have them. So something we might want to do a lot with an array like this is sort it. All right now, languages usually come with some sort of sorting feature, or you may have built your own sorting feature. And the sorting logic is always the same, no matter what you're sorting, right? Whether you're sorting, sorting integers, floating point values, or a player, um, you know, say you're doing quick sort, the quick sort code's always going to be the same. Or if you're doing merge sort, the merge sort code's always going to be the same. Um, so you don't want to <clears throat> you don't want to have to write different uh, sorting functions for every type that you might sort because it's always it's going to be almost entirely shared code. The only thing you need is some way to determine if one type is greater than, less than, or equal to another instance of that type. Right. So for player, uh, we need to know you know how we're going to sort it. Are we going to sort it alphabetically by name or by number of frags? And the language has no way to know that automatically about a type you've made up, right? The language might know how to sort integers and floating points um, built in, but when you're making your own types you want to sort, you have to somehow specify um, what the ordering should be. And there's lots of different ways you might do that. Uh, for instance, in C Sharp, you can use interfaces. Um, you can implement the iComparable interface, right? And I can do a quick action here to implement that. Right, and so I just need to have a compare to function on my class to do uh, I comparable. That's one way to do it, uh, but not all languages have uh, interfaces, and maybe you don't want to do it that way for some reason. Um, so another way you can do it <coughs> is you can write a sorting function uh, that takes in another function to do the comparison. So for instance, the, uh, there's a built-in array.sort function in C Sharp. And it's got a lot of overloads. So there's lots of different versions of it. But one of them uh, takes in your array, so person array, and it takes in a function. Right? And as comparison t it is just a uh, function type. And we'll look at that in a minute. Right? So we need some function here. <coughs> and that function is doing the job of comparing two players to decide if they're the same, less than, or equal. So we can look at uh, the definition of comparison here. And we see that it is a delegate. That just means it's a, a function. And it's a function that returns an integer and takes in an x and a y of type t. So type t can be whatever, whatever type you want, right? Your custom type, our player, for instance. And the return value is a signed integer that indicates the relative values of x and y. So if x is less than y, we return something less than 0. If it's uh, equal, we return 0. And if x is greater than y, we return something greater than 0. Simple enough. So let's do it. Let's make a function here. Um, static int compare players. And we'll have uh, player A and player x just to be consistent and player y. We don't actually have to name them x and y. Um, here, let's not just to show that we don't. Okay, and we'll decide we're going to sort players by frags. So we'll say uh, if uh, a 
dot frags is less than b dot frags. Return negative one. Else if a dot frags is greater than b dot frags. I need to make these public. Return one. Otherwise, return zero. Okay, and I've just used these if statements to make things clear. You'll notice that the, the, the definition for the compare function they've chosen with integer would let you just do something like return um, a minus b or b minus a to make it shorter and faster. We'll just keep it like this for now, see how it works. Um, so now we should be able to pass this function to array.sort. Let's give it a try. And it should be okay with it because it matches the same type definition. So if, if we change this, for instance, to uh, something else uh, like floats, right? Right now, this is not happy, right? It's the wrong return type. It's expecting something that returns an int, <clears throat> right? So it's a type safe function signature. All right, and we can do uh, for each person in person array. All right, we have system included, right? Yeah, so. Right line person dot frags. So we're going to print them out, see if they got sorted. And then just a read line to wait for us to hit enter. So let's give this a try. Okay, so we're, we printed out our players sorted by frags. So it works. So this seems fine, and this is how people did things a lot, like early C programmers would have uh, had sort functions that take in a function pointer and then just call the function to do the sorting. So there's a little bit of an inconvenient thing about this, which is that we might only do this sort in one place, right? And <clears throat> the only place this function compare players might ever get called is when we want to do this sort. So it's a little bit inconvenient and messy that we're declaring a whole function somewhere when we only need it in this one place, right? It's kind of a pain. We got to hop out of what we're doing here, come up somewhere else, decide where to put this function. Like, does it make sense for it to be in here or should it be inside the class? It could be, it doesn't matter. And we got to type out the, the type definition completely. So it's a little bit of extra typing. And if you had to do this sort of thing a lot, you'd have this, this big uh, mess of functions everywhere that maybe you don't really need. So the simple idea to solve the problem is that you have uh, an unnamed function, right? That you can put a function right here in line and not even give it a name, all right? So that's sometimes called an anonymous function or a lambda, all right? The scary Greek letter word is just an anonymous function. It's no big deal. So every language that has lambdas has a different syntax for declaring an anonymous function. Uh, so in C sharp, it looks something like this. All right, so we say <coughs> um, we're gonna have input parameters A and B, and then we're gonna <coughs> have some function. So we could do something like this. And we just take our code from there. We indent it a little differently. We can delete this completely. So now we have the exact same thing. It should run. And again, we're in order. Different numbers this time because it was random, but they are sorted. 
So there you go. So basically, anytime you've got a place where you feel like you might need to declare a function somewhere, but you're only going to use it one time, you can save yourself uh, some time and effort and just put it right there in line. And this also makes it a little bit easier to read for someone else coming in later. They don't have to look at array.sort and then see a function pointer and then go find that function, which could be in a different file, to see what it does. Right? It's just right here. Now they know that you're sorting by frags. Um, so some details on the C-sharp stuff here. Like We haven't declared any types on A and B. Um, that's because C-sharp is inferring the types based on the context here. But you can also just declare the types the way you would normally. That's the same thing. Sometimes you will have to do that if it can't infer the types. Um, if you're only passing one thing, you can leave the parentheses off optionally, right? If, you're, if you only have one thing, and that's that's a common pattern that you'll see. And if you do know things, you can just do it like that. So that's really it. That's all there is to lambdas. Every language has a little bit of a different uh, syntax for it. Uh, that's it. And a, a lambda is just an anonymous function with no name that you can throw in line wherever you want. And most languages today have this feature. So all I got to do is look up the syntax, and you can use lambdas. Any questions? So our next episode will be uh, something, probably metaprogramming. So next up, metaprogramming. We'll talk about that a little bit. All right, if there's no questions, we'll sign off and see you again next time. Bye.